Hi everyone. So today I have a very fun problem for you and we are going to learn probably one of my most favorite things in calculus and a very important concept that you need to know and that is the Newton Leibniz integral rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus. So fundamental theorem calculus you might have seen before but the Newton Leibniz integral rule is going to be the take away from this uh, from this video and essentially it's just differentiating on the integral sign so it's quite interesting. Now this is the problem number 6 from the CMI entrance exam in 2019 and in this video we're going to learn the Newton Leibniz method of differentiating under the integral sign then we have the fundamental theorem of calculus then we have certain maxima and minima in intervals how to calculate maxima and minima basically and uh, after that we have book suggestions for ISI CMI and at the end a similar but challenging problem this video is sponsored by chinta.com since 2010 Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances and research projects for school and college students. Let's begin. So we have two parts, right? In the first part they have asked us to compute um, the value of a differentiation under the integral sign. and for the second part uh, we essentially need to determine the maxima or minima if it exists local maxima local minima okay if it exists now well um for the first part uh, let's let me just start with that and for the first part we're going to ne need a rule called as the newton leibniz integral rule or just the newton leibniz rule right and it is essentially very important for differentiating under the integral sign right so what are we doing over here we're just differentiating under an integral right logarithm of t times cos is for 4t dt okay so now what are we going to do over here well there's a standard rule in a way it's a formula or theorem however you put it of differentiating on the integral sign it looks a slightly complicated it's like a little bit big you don't need to like exactly remember it but you just need to know the idea the functioning of how that formula works right but the looks of it is quite complicated i can understand but the, the functioning is actually relatively easy So if we have the d by dx of um, this integral with these limits of f of x comma t dt, this is simply f of x comma b of x. So b of x was the upper limit times b prime x minus f of x comma a of x, which was the lower limit times a prime x differentiation plus the integral from a of x to b of x of the partial derivative. of f of x comma t dt right this looks very complicated trust me it is not okay the working of it is actually relatively simple and that is what we need to understand right that's what we need to understand okay so excellent so in this problem what did we have we had um, essentially the d by dx of the integral from 0 to e raised power x of logarithm of t times cos is per 4 t dt okay now if we apply newton leibniz rule on this what will we get so first of all um what we will get is we will essentially get ln of e raised power x times co cosine raised power 4 e raised power x what did i do i just replaced t with the upper limit e raised power x right then then you will differentiate the upper limit will differentiate the upper limit okay then will subtract it from uh, essentially what i had written over here this term so this is the term that i just wrote now this is the term what i will write but if you see a prime x ax is the lower limit and ax is a constant over here so a prime x will be zero so automatically that will be zero right i'll just write a note over here a of x is equal to zero therefore a prime x equal to zero okay so the second term will essentially be zero right then then what do we have and the third and the final term that i have written over here that is nothing but the integral of z from 0 to e raised power x of the del by del x uh of the lo um, logarithm of t times cosine raised power 4 dt now this will obviously be zero because the partial derivative you don't have any terms in x it will be zero right so essentially what we get is the d by dx of the integral of 0 to e raised power x log t cosine raised power 4t dt is nothing but ln times e raised power x cosine e raised power x raised power 
times the derivative of e raised power x, which is nothing but e raised power x, right? And if I just simplify this, ln e raised power x is nothing but x. So x times e raised power x times cosine raised power four e raised power x, and that is where the part a stops, right? So to kind of give you a little bit recap, what we essentially do in this formula is we first of all plug in this upper value into this function, then find out the derivative of this upper limit, then subtract it, then subtract it um, by plugging in the lower limit into this function f, and then finding the derivative of this function f. Now in our problem, uh, the lower limit was a constant; it was zero, so its derivative would be zero. So this term became zero, and then we add the integral of the partial derivative of f of x comma t dt. Right here, it only depended upon t, so it is uh, it's essentially zero, right? So this is essentially the working of this theorem, and this would be uh, the answer. Okay, now let's move on to part B. Now, what have they given us in part B? In part B, they told us to define a function f of x for x greater than zero. Perfect, and then determine the open integrals, if any, where f of x is decreasing, right? And all the open intervals, if any, where f of x increasing. Also determine the local minima and local maxima. They kind of need to determine what these uh, local minima and local maxima and the range of values for which they occur. Okay, so let's start part B. They have given us a function f of x, which was integral from one to x of, I believe, t log t dt. Right? That was what it was. If I'm not wrong. Let me just see. Yeah, that is perfect. Now here we're gonna need something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, there are a couple of ways to state this. I'm gonna use the one that we're gonna need in our particular problem. So it it, it essentially states that um, the d by dx of um, f of t dt from a to x is nothing but f of x. Okay, um, what does this mean? Well, let me just take an example. Let, let's just see uh, what's the meaning of the problem. Okay, so in the problem they had given us uh, f of x is the integral from one to x of t log t dt. So what would be f prime x? F prime x is nothing but d by dx of this thing, and from the fundamental theorem of calculus, it'll be nothing but x times log x. Right? I just plugged in x with t t with x, I'm sorry, this plugged in t with x, and that would be the uh, value of f prime x, the derivative of f of x, right? And uh, now once we have this, we can, you know, make certain, uh, make certain claims about this function f, right? So now that we have found the derivative, we can find out the double derivative, right? And this is just the product rule, so it'll be x by x plus uh, log x and the differentiation of x is one. So the double derivative of x would be nothing but one plus log x. Okay, uh, and that's great now because uh, x is greater than zero. It is given as x is greater than zero. So where will f prime of x be equal to zero, right? Just kind of recap, f prime of x was this. Now x prime f prime of x would be zero at x equals to one. It cannot be zero because log zero is really not defined in the real world, right? So we have uh, x equal to one where f prime of x gives us zero. Now if I just put in x equals to one in f double prime x, I would get, what, what would I get? I would get, one plus log one, which is zero. So this is one. So therefore we actually see that f double prime of one is greater than zero. Therefore we have a minima, right? We have a minima at x equals to one. And now we can, we are more like we are more or less completed. We can just define the range. So therefore I can conclude that f is decreasing on the interval zero to one and increasing in one to infinity. So we have defined the interval and also we had to define a little bit of the minima and the maxima. So what can we conclude from this? So we can just say that um, from this second derivative test that we just performed, f of x has a local minima at x equals to one, but does not have any local maxima, right? It does not have any local maxima as we had seen from the derivative test, right? But what we can say that it has a global maxima, right? It has a global maxima. It does not have a, a local maxima, it has a global maxima, 
So that is essentially what they had asked us in the problem. Uh, part A was essentially computing the derivative and the integral sign. We just used the Leibniz rule. Uh, and part B was to determine the uh, intervals in which this is increasing or decreasing. So yeah, that was a very informative video. And I hope you learned a couple of things over there, a couple of interesting things over there. Okay, so coming on to certain book suggestions for uh, calculus and ISSEMI, we have pre-calculus by Tarasov, single variable calculus by I. M. Aron, playing with graphs, challenges and thrills of pre-college mathematics, mathematical circles, the Russian experience, excursion mathematics, and a test of mathematics at the 10 plus 2 level. Now, after that, we have a very similar but challenging problem. And I wanted to compute the value of this definite integral uh, from 0 to 2 pi, e raised power cosine theta, cosine of sine theta d theta. And I wanted to use the Leibniz integral rule, right? So if you can essentially use the Leibniz integral rule, differentiating on the integral sign, that would be better. And uh, if I give you a hint, I'll just give you a hint to make life a little bit easier for you. If I can define f of t as 0 to 2 pi of e raised power t cosine theta times cosine of t sine theta d theta. Now you can differentiate on the integral sign. So this was a little bit of a hint that I gave you. So yeah, as always, if you make any progress on it, please let me know. Or if you're able to solve it, then too. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.